public service announcement. Please turn off your phones. It's time to truly reconnect. Now more than ever before, we need to come together and get connected. The challenges we've faced as a data community have pushed the limits of everything we thought was possible, including Pass Summit. This is your time to have fun, build lasting relationships, and enjoy the personal connections you've been looking forward to all year long. Whether you're new to the Pass community or a seasoned Pass pro, our first ever Pass Virtual Summit has the world-class speakers, training, and interactive networking opportunities you need to upskill and achieve your career goals. Our streams, spotlights, and learning pathways, spanning the entire Microsoft Data Platform, over 250 sessions, have been carefully curated to take you from where you are today and take you to where you need to be. Wherever you are in the world and however you're joining us, put on your best sweatpants and get ready to reconnect with your data community. Welcome to Pass Virtual Summit. Good morning and welcome to day one of our first ever Pass Virtual Summit. This is a big shift for our community, and I'm so excited for you to be able to experience all the training, speakers, and networking Past Summit has to offer in a virtual setting. The presence of a global pandemic has had a major impact on our world. As data professionals, we're all familiar with change, but adjusting to a new way of working, learning, and interacting with one another has challenged us more than ever before. However, I'm confident it's a challenge we can overcome together. I know that most of you were looking forward to the opportunity to connect with one another in person, and I was too, but I can assure you that the networking events, activities, and ways you can connect with one another throughout the event will be as close to an in-person conference as it gets. All of the world-class content and industry knowledge is here over three days. This truly will be a virtual conference experience. And if you're watching this on our past TV live stream, this is only a taste of what our virtual conference has to offer, so it's not too late to register. As the data industry and needs of data professionals evolve, PASS must be agile and ready to invest in new initiatives and opportunities to support our members in their careers. One of the biggest milestones for our organization this year was the introduction of our PASS Pro membership. This new membership offering was built to drive greater learning and networking opportunities for the data community through the world-class content, exclusive training opportunities, and discounts. This additional revenue stream will also help us sustain our organization as an ever-changing industry. If you haven't already upgraded, head over to pass.org to find out more. The transition to a virtual conference was another challenge we were able to accomplish this year. PASS Virtual Summit has pushed us to get creative and find new ways to engage attendees and generate the excitement of an in-person event. Over the next three days, you'll be able to connect with peers, speakers, and sponsors all throughout the event, wherever you're joining in from. We have networking bubbles, community chats, session Q&As, group breakouts, vendor meetups, and much, much more, which will enable increased conversations in the community zone, exhibit hall, and between and during sessions. Remember, you have 12 months of on-demand access to session content, so if you get busy chatting, you can always catch up on anything you've missed at any time during the year. I encourage you to take this live opportunity to build your network with global data experts who can help you advance in your career. I also hope you were all able to attend and enjoy our regional welcome receptions. I know I did. Thanks to this virtual setting, we are able to spread these receptions across two time zones for our global audience, another first for the conference. For those of you who have scheduled time at the Microsoft Azure Data Clinic, we're excited to once again give you the opportunity to connect directly with Microsoft engineers. Past Summit is the only place you can have your problems solved by the people responsible for building the platform we all love. It's incredible to see our global community represented at this year's conference. I encourage all of you to get to know your peers in different regions and find out more about the innovations taking place all around the world. I also want to welcome all the first timers who have been able to join us in this new accessible format. This is just the beginning of your lifelong education journey with PASS. Whether this is your first time or you're an alumni, PASS Virtual Summit is your chance to reconnect, have fun, learn, and escape the isolation.
isolation from working from home. If you're attending past virtual summit today, it's because you're serious about advancing your career and building a network that can help you achieve your goals and resolve your issues. And there's no need for your, any of your learning to stop here. PASS is so much more than what's on offer over the next three days. So please take advantage of the on-demand and in-person resources available to our members, 365 days a year. While the pandemic came as a complete surprise to the industry and the world, and presented challenges both logistically for PASS Summit and financially for our entire organization, we were able to move forward with the launch of virtual events as well as a long-awaited PASS Pro membership offering. As we adjust to the new reality that our organization operates in, there are many things we're looking forward to this year. Supporting our PASS Pro members, launching PASS Summit 2021, and working with partners and sponsors to close the gap in our budget. I want to thank our premier sponsor, Microsoft, for being such an important part of this event. PASS and Microsoft's relationship goes back to the early days of our community, and their continued support and contributions have helped grow our organization to where it is today. We recently announced the launch of our Microsoft Learn Azure DBA Associate Certification Training as an added benefit to our PASS Pro membership, and I look forward to working with them throughout the year on more exciting initiatives. PASS is built on our global network of data professionals connecting and sharing knowledge with one another. To succeed in the long term, we need to continue facilitating these exceptional experiences for our worldwide audience. Looking forward to what 2021 has in store, PASS remains committed to providing world-class educational content that increases member engagement throughout the year. Our focus this year will continue to build on the foundational pillars we established in fiscal year 19, educational content, engagement, and accessibility in support of PASS revenue growth. To get the most out of your first virtual PASS Summit experience, please make sure you download the PASS Virtual Summit app if you haven't already done so, to get real-time notifications and updates. Take some time to navigate the virtual conference platform and get familiar with the main stage, exhibit hall, and the Microsoft Azure Data Clinic. There will be live video chat sessions with sponsors and exhibitors at different times throughout the event, and the exhibit hall will be open 24-7 for you to visit. So stop by and get to know more about our partners and how they can help you, and leave a question at any time. I'd like to give a special thank you to our sponsors, exhibitors, and GAP partners. The support they provide to the PASS organization helps our community stay up to date with the latest innovations and technologies and makes everything we do at PASS Virtual Summit and throughout the year possible. One of my favorite traditions of PASS Summit is announcing the Passion Award winner. This award is reserved for a truly outstanding member of the community who has committed themselves and their time to selflessly helping their fellow community members. This year, it is my honor to be able to present this award to a candidate who couldn't be any more deserving, Tracy Baggiano. Tracy has been crucial to the success of the Raleigh TriPass Group and has been involved with the Linux Virtual Group, PassWit, and is now a co-leader of the Pass DEI Virtual Group. She's always willing to support and mentor her fellow community members and is committed to creating awareness for neurodiversity, mental health, and inclusion issues facing the members of the data industry. Thank you for all you do, Tracy. Thanks, Wendy. Wow, <laughs> what an honor and privilege to win the Passion Award this year. I'm glad I made a difference in the past community and I'd like to challenge the audience to go out and make a difference in the community as well. Again, thank you for this honor and privilege. For those of you who don't already know, the PASS election is now live. This year, there are three seats on the board up for election. Over the next three days, you'll have the chance to watch interviews with the candidates and find out more about the future leaders of PASS. So get out and vote and have your say in the direction of our organization. I'd like to wish all of this year's candidates the best of luck. And lastly, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank our outgoing directors, Lori Edwards, Roberto Francesca, and Hamish Watson for the support of the community throughout the year. Being on the board is a difficult task, but all of you have done a phenomenal job in pushing our organization forward in exceptional times. With that, I'm pleased to hand you over to Corporate Vice President of Azure Data, Rohan Kumar. Rohan is a returning keynote speaker, and this year he will be sharing the latest Microsoft innovations, including big data clusters, Azure SQL, ARC-enabled data services, and Synapse Analytics, including exclusive announcements 
that will be shared for the first time right here at PATH's Virtual Summit 2020. Over to you, Rohan. Hi, welcome to PATH Summit 2020 style. My name is Rohan Kumar and I work with the Azure Data Group at Microsoft. Before we dive in, I want to acknowledge how different your environment looks compared to the past summits that we did together in person. I, for one, am coming to you from a mostly empty studio. These folks are doing their best to keep the energy high, but the vibe here is nothing compared to being together with you all. On the bright side though, this is a nice change from being in the house. And no one here has asked me to explain new math problems or Python programming to them yet. A big shout out to those of you who are at home right now juggling all the roles and responsibilities that 2020 has brought with it. I wish you silent reading assignments, sleepy pets, and consolidated package deliveries. Now, I know there were different ideas floating around about what this year's past summit might look like. I want to say that from our perspective, we are fully committed to the past organization and all of you that make this community what it is today. We are thankful for your participation and dialogue on all sides because of your willingness to participate and engage in the dialogue are exactly what makes this community so valuable. Over the past eight months, our work, our priorities have all shifted. We've worn more hats and much more comfortable pants than ever before. Through this kaleidoscope of change, the true colors of our community have come into focus. We are many shades of resiliency, collaboration, and creativity and together, we are creating order and beauty from all these scattered pieces. Want to see our true colors in action? Check out these clips from some folks you might recognize. G'day everyone. The world has changed so much over the past six, seven months. But the cool thing is, the new normal means I can deploy my data platform in the cloud anywhere in the world, even here on my farm. I'm here in my home office in Norway, trying to uh, renovate and uh, do my job at the same time. My daddy, he spent the last few months talking to the strange ring of light he has. I think he might just be talking to himself. Anna, what are you doing? I have a call right now. I hope you're having a great past summer. Let's enjoy the rest of the week. Still have fun. I'm sure these are challenging times for you as well, but we all just have to make the best of it. And I hope that we can see each other in person soon. And if you get hungry, Yay. I know, I know. If you get hungry, uh, go get a snack. You know, if you want to grab the hearty size bag of Oreos from the kitchen, uh, nobody's going to judge. It's great to see you, our Janice, Catherine, Hamish, Erin, and Matt. You too, Anna. And to all of you watching, I'd love to see the creative ways you're continuing to collaborate and grow too. Please share your story with me on Twitter. You can find me at, at RohanKData and use the hashtag SQLPass. The truth is that whatever you're doing or however you're doing it, it's working. This community has helped countless relief organizations, global businesses, and local schools adapt to the new reality and get them back into the future of digital transformation at a vastly accelerated rate. At Microsoft, we've seen companies advance two years in two months or less. That kind of change is only possible through the collaboration and creativity that you and your colleagues bring to today's unique challenges. It's even more impressive when you consider all the new technologies that go into supporting modern day digital transformation. From managing structured and unstructured data, on-premises, in the cloud, and at the edge, to finding new efficient ways to drive insights out of all your data, you are in the position of needing to know more and do more than ever before. It's a big stretch for any one person. At Microsoft, we are working hard to change that. The end-to-end -end Azure Data Platform offers economies of skill that help bring new technologies into your comfort zone. Normally, when we talk about economies of scale, we talk about how you gain efficiency through volume, right? Well, economies of skill help you gain efficiency by applying your existing knowledge to new technologies to help you save time. And in today's new world, your time is more valuable than ever before. The Azure Data Strategy delivers economies of skill in three main ways. First, it makes the DBA and BI skills that you already have transferable across key services. 
all those SQL Server skills that are second nature to you, like how to handle configuration knobs, run performance troubleshooting, build an SSRS, and set up encryption, all of that can be directly applied to the cloud through the Azure SQL family of databases and Power BI, as well as on-premises servers and other clouds through Azure Arc. You can also use those skills in your edge computing environments with Azure SQL Edge and put them to use with big data analytics and machine learning with Azure Synapse Analytics. Second, Azure gives you economies of skill by offering familiar enterprise-grade management tools and security controls that work consistently across your entire Azure environment. This includes your open source databases, NoSQL with Cosmos DB, and Redis Cache, as well as everything Azure SQL. For example, if you know how to use SQL Server Management Studio, you can use Azure Data Studio for cloud and edge services. If you use SSIS to move data on premises, you can package it up and deploy it directly inside Azure Data Factory. Across all these services, Azure Security Center provides the same foundation for security and adheres to over 90 compliance certifications more than any cloud provider. Finally, Azure provides you with economies of skill by supporting your favorite languages and developer frameworks across the entire data platform. We support connectors for .NET, Node.js, PHP, Java, and make it possible to use common tools for development such as Visual Studio, VS Code, GitHub, and Azure DevOps. And of course, we support T-SQL across all our Azure SQL services. On the whole, Azure provides a complete end-to-end -end data platform with everything you need to transform your raw data sources of any type or size into easy to understand business insights. We continuously refine the services and products that make up our platform to help you maximize your economies of scale. Let's dive in and I'll show you what I mean. Azure SQL is a great place to start. Azure SQL no longer just refers to Azure SQL database. Instead, we use the shortened name to talk about the Azure SQL family, a collection of both infrastructure as a service and fully managed platform as a service offerings. You can use these services to support a wide range of application patterns. Let's run through the three services on the screen to briefly talk about which service you might want to use and when. SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines works great for lift and shift scenarios in which you want your SQL workloads to maintain 100% compatibility with the original database and operating system. With SQL Server Resource Provider, you get IaaS Plus benefits, including automatic patching, backup automation, and easy high availability setup. Azure SQL Managed Instance is an excellent option for modernizing your existing SQL Server applications. It has the broadest SQL Server compatibility of any fully managed service, making it possible to modernize apps in the cloud with minimal code changes. And finally, Azure SQL Database supports modern cloud applications on an intelligent managed service that includes serverless compute. Azure SQL also offers hyperscale databases that enable unlimited scale for your growing workloads and serverless options for applications with intermittent traffic patterns. All the service tiers are priced at an industry-leading low total cost of ownership. I know you probably hear a lot of talk about where SQL Server runs best, but it should come as no surprise to you that SQL Server workloads run best on Azure, period. Our SQL Server engineers work alongside the Azure team to make sure this is true in each and every case. Here, we got a few points about what makes Azure SQL the best destination for SQL Server. In addition to providing evergreen SQL, which means you're always running the latest version of SQL Server and never have to upgrade, Azure SQL also handles administration tasks, including patching, updates, backup, high availability setup for you, so you can focus on higher business priorities. And it offers intelligent security and performance features built in. As you can see this on the slide, we're creating ways to measurably help you boost productivity, ROI, and the life of your existing assets. And our investments in security are unparalleled in the industry. Taken together, this depth of product innovation and unbeatable pricing offers give you the best innovation and price performance available. Earlier this year, a set of benchmarks from analyst firm GigaOM showed that Azure is up to 3.6 times faster and up to 84% more price performant than SQL Server running in AWS. I'm excited to share some highly requested enhancements we've made to Azure SQL, 
including zone redundancy for your vCore based SQL databases and elastic pools on the general purpose tier. This feature utilizes Azure availability zones to replicate databases and pools within the same region across several unique physical locations, increasing the resiliency without requiring changes to the application logic. We have another long-awaited capability that's coming soon to Azure SQL Managed Instance as well, machine learning services for R and Python, which lets you execute Python and R scripts in database, eliminating the transfer of data across the network to other servers. These are two of a dozen updates being made to the Azure SQL family. Next, I'd like to bring Anna Hoffman to show you how Azure SQL helps you move your on-premises workloads and reports into the cloud and build them out without having to start from scratch. Anna, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Rohan. Today, I want to show you how we're continuously working to make it easier for you to migrate your workloads to Azure SQL and how you can take advantage of some of the latest advancements across Azure SQL Managed Instance, machine learning services, and this one may surprise you, SSRS. So let's imagine a world where I work at a small company, Adventure Work Cycles, a biking and related gear shop. You might have heard of them. They have several locations around the globe. As you know, us data people often wear a lot of hats, and today my main ones are DBA and data scientist. My main focus is managing our SQL Server 2012 databases and the associated SSRS reports. Each month, we print these out for our monthly sales report meetings with the leadership team. Now, our hardware is expiring, plus I was so over getting calls at 2 a.m. from our teams in Europe where, when there were issues with things like the availability of the database. Azure SQL Managed Instance introduced the best of both worlds because it, one, allows us to migrate to a managed and versionless service with an SLA, so goodbye 2 a.m. calls, and two, we don't have to modify anything that we're doing with the Instance Scope features like link servers, database mail, and SQL Server agent. Since our hardware is expiring, we also want to lift and shift our SSRS reporting system to Azure as quickly as possible. We recently announced new VM images that make that so easy. I can simply select the plan I want, and you can see there are options around my existing license, as well as if I want to migrate to SQL VMs and have them deployed side by side. Now, fun fact, SSAS VMs are coming soon as well. I actually already deployed the SSRS VM, and you can see I'm connecting to it now. And it was really easy for me to move my reports over. I was even able to change my data source and host my SSRS DBs in my new managed instance. You can see I have my report server and report server TempDB in my managed instance. So let's take a look at one of the reports I migrated over, which has to do with country sales performance. I can see the total sales so far this year by salesperson if I extend the country. I can also see the trends and respective percentages. With about two months left this year, it looks like we're really outperforming our quota. Upon closer look at another report which dives into the different regions, I can see there are a lot of months where there isn't a quota and there also doesn't seem to be any real rhyme or reason to it. So I put on my data science hat and decide to take a look. Starting in 2016, we added the ability to do in-database machine learning, which makes it really easy for me to do machine learning exercise without moving a bunch of data around. Now, just last month, we announced public preview for machine learning services, so R and Python in Azure SQL Managed Instance, making my life easier since I actually started this project before we migrated. So let's hop to Azure Data Studio, where I've enabled the machine learning extension. This makes it easier for me to do things like manage the packages, make predictions, and import models. I can even create a notebook from here. I went ahead and created the Python notebook to start looking at the data. I also wanted to provide some notes, and a few more formatting items, and even a screenshot of the odd report that I saw. As you can see, we've greatly improved the text editing experience. You no longer have to learn Markdown, but it is there if you still want it. I can then start to analyze the data using Python, confirming there are a lot of null values for quota and that there doesn't really seem to be a great relationship currently between sales and quota in 2018 or 2019. From here, I can go through splitting my data using packages I already know, like scikit-learn, and training my model. 
I can then make some predictions and compare my results. When I'm happy with the model, I'm going to deploy it into my database by creating a stored procedure to generate the model, train the model, and store the serialized model into a table. I can then create another stored procedure, which I can use to make predictions, execute it, and store those predictions in a new table. Now I can see the quota and adjusted or predicted quota, which also has no null values. Finally, I can go into Report Builder and add the adjusted quota and adjusted variance columns and run the report. I'm now able to get a more reasonable quota, and I can see some of the areas where we still need to work on as we wrap up the year. While we prep to move to Power BI, we can take advantage of the new premium per user SKU, which is going to allow organizations to get these capabilities on a per user basis. So I can start playing with our new reports and even building dashboards. So wherever you are in your cloud journey, you should feel confident that Azure SQL and the Azure platform are here to support you. Thanks and back to you, Rohan. Thanks, Anna. I love your adventure company. A kayak vacation sounds amazing right now. While the SSRS and ML capabilities are awesome, one of my favorite parts of your demo is seeing how you use what you know and what you use on-premises to quickly pivot your business into something new. That economy of skill is what's driving the change today. Let's look at a real customer next, Isertis. They're using their existing SQL knowledge to work to help them quickly adopt the new serverless compute tier in Azure SQL. Isertis is a leading provider of contract lifecycle management solutions in the cloud. They help some of the world's biggest organizations maximize contract value, stay compliant, and develop trusting customer relationships. Isertis customers use a single dashboard that's part of the Isertis contract management platform to access and analyze their contracts. The system handles over 6.5 million contracts in more than 40 languages across 90 countries. As they have grown, the company has struggled to scale their legacy systems to keep up with their customers' daily workloads. By moving to Azure SQL Database Serverless, Isertis was able to automatically scale compute power and only pay for resources they used down to the second. This allowed them to meet customer demand, save up to 70% on database costs, and free up their team to focus on new automation initiatives. The move made sense because it was the right technology for their business objectives. But it also made sense because it empowered their team to apply their existing SQL database skills to new scenarios. Modern applications spanning the intelligent cloud and intelligent edge is the new normal. Today, we're seeing more new scenarios spring up from the edge than anywhere else as IoT devices become part of our everyday world. Of course, edge computing also presents a lot of challenges like poor connectivity, increased thread exposure, system incompatibility, and so on that can take a lot of time and energy to learn and address. Not anymore. With Azure SQL Edge, you get the same Microsoft SQL platform that you use on-premises and in the cloud at the edge, bringing intelligent capabilities to wherever your data lives. Optimized for IoT servers, gateways, and devices, the small but mighty database features built-in data streaming, storage, and AI support to help you drive real-time insights, whether on a factory floor or a remote wind farm. Only on Azure can you access native SQL code base consistent across your entire data estate. It's the same industry-leading platform that your teams already know and trust, now deployed across IoT gateways and edge devices, something no other cloud provider can offer. Also, only with Azure SQL Edge can you natively integrate other industry-leading Azure services, such as Azure Blob Storage, Azure IoT Hub, Azure Machine Learning Services, Azure Kubernetes Service, and Azure Data Studio. Let's dig in for a second to see how consistent SQL code and native data movement play out in Azure SQL Edge. Azure SQL Edge solves a core customer challenge of integrating IoT data from numerous sources to your data center and to the cloud using the same SQL DBA skills you would elsewhere. Now with Azure SQL Edge, you can utilize built-in capabilities like T-SQL streaming to help with native data movement. Choose operational databases and targets best suited to your needs as an application developer or operator, and simplify and secure your edge architecture with natively integrated Azure Edge family of products and services. Azure SQL Edge is generally available. Which leads to one last point. 
We've made it simple and easy to get started, including all new pricing models right-sized for IoT applications. You can get started today in the Azure Marketplace for as low as $10 per month per device. To highlight how one of our partners has already started with Azure SQL Edge, I'd like to introduce Dr. Bernard Kornfeld from Raven IoT to discuss how they are integrating Azure SQL Edge to provide complete edge solutions for IoT. Thanks for the introduction, Rowan, and for inviting me to talk about how we're using real-time data and analytics for our customers. At Raven, we solve industry-specific problems by combining next-generation IoT cloud and edge technologies with industrial data science and subject matter expertise. Raven's easy to use, flexible and codeless solution builder enables the collection of data from any IoT device or industrial software using our ready-built connectors. On the front end, Raven offers real-time operational dashboards, custom notifications, and machine learning-driven predictive analytics. Raven is fully hosted on Microsoft Azure Cloud, and we partner with Arrow and Intel to source the best edge hardware available. We work with a wide range of customers, including in the industrial, commercial, and health sectors. As Rowan mentioned earlier, the speed of innovation at the IoT Edge presents new challenges to almost every industry. There are constraints around latency and bandwidth, around managing the large quantities of data streaming from hundreds or thousands of IoT devices, and, of course, around security and business continuity for your entire Edge architecture. But extending your data estate and organizing your edge architecture doesn't have to be hard. Simplifying and securing your infrastructure is achievable with the right tools. Latency and bandwidth constraints can be resolved by processing and analyzing data on the device itself, optimizing reaction time and sending only the data you need. You can manage large quantities of data and data types by applying in-database machine learning to time series and streaming data and you can have turnkey management with always current updates through Azure deployed to a local cache to operate continuously in online, offline, and hybrid estates. Our partnership with Microsoft and tools such as Microsoft Azure SQL Edge help us to support Raven's mission of providing easy to use and intuitive complete IoT solutions to customers across industries. And to show one such example of how we're using streaming data to provide real-time insights and optimization, let's pass it over to Sia Krishnan from the Azure SQL Edge product team to walk us through a healthcare use case demo that helps monitor and track critical assets in hospitals. Sia? Thank you, Bernard, and thanks to Raven for this amazing partnership. Hi, everyone. I'm Sia, and I work as a program manager with the Azure SQL Edge team. IoT, or Internet of Things, is transforming the way people live and work. Beyond all of the smart devices that we are using, IoT is playing a key role in transforming the daily businesses of companies across industry verticals. When it comes to healthcare, 89% of the companies out there are either adopting IoT solutions or are on the way of adopting it. Almost every day in the past seven months, the pandemic has been on our top of our minds. The pandemic and our preparedness has shown the importance of having mobile healthcare solutions. Life-saving hospital assets such as ventilators and infusion pumps need to be mobile. Mobility brings with it challenges when it comes to monitoring and tracking these hospital assets. In this demo, we will see how Raven and Microsoft are coming together to build adoptable and intelligent healthcare IoT solutions for our customers. For the purpose of this demo, assume I am the maintenance supervisor in the hospital. One of my key responsibilities is keeping our ventilators operational, a time-consuming and a critical task in the age of COVID-19. What I have in front of me is Raven's customized dashboard. You can see the map of my hospital with the location of multiple ventilators situated across the buildings. If you look at the data closely, you will realize it is of time series in nature. I'm tracking multiple data points for each of these ventilators, such as which room are they located in? What is the temperature of the device in there? The battery state of the ventilator 
and also the battery state of the RFID tracker that is situated on the ventilator. This was made possible by SQL Edge that was deployed on these devices. Native data streaming capabilities on Azure SQL Edge enables the devices deployed on the hospital floor to capture real-time information from the ventilators. This helps me make most of my assets without having to spend my whole day conducting in-person checks. So in addition to giving me visibility into imminent failures, by collecting data over time and combining it with information records like service details, I can start to build a proactive maintenance plan to minimize downtime and maximize quality of care. The data that I have been collecting at the edge is aggregated and sent to the cloud storage. In this case, Azure SQL DB. This is possible because of native data movement features that is supported in Azure SQL Edge. SQL Edge also has built-in ML capabilities uh, with native support for running Onyx models inside the database. Onyx is uh, Open Neural Network Exchange. And while Edge is the ideal place to run inferencing, uh, mainly to avoid massive real-time data uploads, it is not the best place to build models. Once the data is in the cloud, as you can see here, I will be using Azure ML capabilities to train or retrain models that need to be deployed to the edge for better inferencing and anomaly detection. So now let us uh, spend the next few minutes uh, trying to build a model that is gonna be used to predict a device failure before it results in a complete service outage. First and foremost, I'm going to import the data set that I have um, sent to my Azure SQL DB cloud target. Once we fetch our data set, I'm going to be using uh, AutoML to evaluate different model types. And as you can see here, I'm running 10 iterations. You can run more than 10 iterations in order to help you choose the best model out there. And what AutoML does is it helps us evaluate different model types and then it recommends the right one based on what is the best run fitted model that is suited for our data set. So once that is done, uh, thanks to the native support for Onyx, uh, the winning model can now be easily exported to Azure SQL Edge. Now let's see how the model that we have trained here can be used with Azure SQL Edge. So after loading it into the table, we can reference it uh, using with the native predict statement over here. So let's fetch the latest data for a particular ventilator and then use it to make a prediction on whether it's likely to be nearing a failure. Let me go ahead and run this query. So once that is done, you will see here for the purpose of this demo, we are looking at 20 different ventilators and out of which there is one ventilator which has label one, meaning it is up for service sometime soon. And by sharing the same data with my medical colleagues, they can also remotely review and validate the device configuration irrespective of where they are located and take timely actions as needed for their patient's well-being. Through this demo, we saw how Azure SQL Edge's features such as native data movement, streaming capabilities, ability to handle time series data, and built-in machine learning plays a key role in not just hospital asset management, but also empowering medical professionals to pursue the best outcome for their patient. While this is one example, Azure SQL Edge isn't limited to a particular industry vertical. Azure SQL Edge plays a key role when it comes to data management and analysis wherever there is an IoT or Edge use case. With that, over to you, Rohan. Thanks, Sia. And thank you, Dr. Confeld. I'm humbled to think that a portion of our work goes into helping ensure some of the most vulnerable in our population are getting the care they need. It's amazing to think about what you can do with all the rich capabilities and power of SQL Server you're familiar with and know how to use when it reaches out to the edge. Of course, amazing isn't limited to the edge. There's massive amount of innovation happening on premises too. SQL Server is exciting because it's the foundational database for our SQL-based technologies in Azure. With more than 25 years of history, we've collaborated with you to continuously evolve SQL Server to meet the needs of the modern data platform. 
SQL Server 2019 provides the industry-leading performance and built-in security you expect, but it also enables you to apply intelligence across all your data. With SQL Server Big Data Clusters capability, you can use familiar tools to make sense of all your structured and unstructured data. Easily access high volumes of data using either SQL or Spark and combine it with different data types from many sources, including Oracle, MongoDB, Postgres, and many others. On top of that, you can use built-in AI capabilities for comprehensive analytics over all your unified data. While SQL Server continues to grow, our commitment to leading performance and security is constant. SQL Server 2019 builds upon this legacy with even faster database recovery and security features like secure enclaves. It's no wonder SQL Server is the least vulnerable database over the last nine years. More than ever before, SQL Server is about providing users choice and flexibility. Whatever workloads you need to manage, SQL Server supports your choice of language, operating system, and deployment, whether that's Windows, Linux, or Docker, and Kubernetes. I would like to share a little bit more about three components that go into providing intelligence over all your data. The first is enhanced data virtualization, which allows you to combine data from many sources while avoiding data movement or replication. The second is an HDFS data lake, accessible through either SQL or Spark with a single admin portal and integrated security for simple management. And the last is a complete AI platform that lets you ingest and prep data from many sources, then train, store, and operationalize your models all in one system. This is a huge benefit to organization with lots of different data types coming from many sources because unlocking diverse data helps your businesses achieve more. Wherever this data lives, SQL Server is the hub for all of it. Let's bring in Buckwoody to demonstrate how you can use SQL Server 2019 to solve all sorts of problems, from accounting fraud to cabin fever. Wait for it. The reference will make sense in a minute. Hi, Buck. Thanks for joining today. Are you ready for your demo? Hi, Rohan. It's me, Buck. I'm down here in Tampa, Florida, the home of many popular and successful sports ball franchises. Go team! So anyway, the other day, I mentioned that cool movie that I saw that I want to tell you about, but you said you were really busy. And I thought what we could do is right before we get started, I could tell you about that movie. It was so cool. It's called The Accountant with Ben Affleck. And he's like, he's like an accountant, but he's like a, a, like a ninja accountant, right? And he's trying to find these bad guys that are doing money laundering. And they have this ninja bad guy. And he was really good in The Punisher, right? I'll tell you about that one later. But he uses this thing called... Benford's Law. And Benford's Law is this weird formula that states if you take a bunch of random numbers and they follow a standard pattern, they will have the number one starting 30% of the time, like 1,125, 1,589,000, that sort of thing. And a two starts the number 17% of the time. This happens all over nature, it happens in chemistry, and it happens inside financial transactions. So you can use it to find money laundering, which is a really hard problem. So then I thought, what if I could do the same thing that Ben Affleck did, you know, the Benford formula? What if I could do that in Transact SQL? But I need a lot of data, so I... What? I'm talking too fast? Okay. okay. All right, I'll, I'll slow down. I'll slow down. So I went out and found a whole bunch of data and you told me not to use real bank data. So I didn't, I went out and got a bunch of data from various financial simulations and all that. And I brought it down and, and what I did was this, I, I stood up a big data cluster, SQL Server big data cluster, and I brought it into the HDFS file system, just straight in, just streamed it right in there. Now we can read things with Spark inside HDFS, which is very cool. And I can look at it and I can see things and I can do all kinds of machine learning and all kinds of other things to it, but I thought I want to do this inside Transact SQL just to see if we could do it. So the first thing I did was just put it all together, all the files, because Spark's really good at that. And the next thing I did after I looked at the schema to see kind of what was there, I noticed there was like some duplicate values and there's some null values. So I just fixed those. Very, very simple. Really piece of cake to do. And then all I did was write it out. That's just, I just wrote it right down to the HDFS that's right inside big data clusters. So I'm inside my security boundary the whole bit. All right, we got tons of data, tons of data. And now here's the fun part. You're going to love this. This is so cool. So anyway, I grabbed the HDFS table. I just made sure I could read 
you know, text value data. And then I create a pointer to the HDFS. That's all I did. And then all you do is make a table. It's just a regular SQL Server table. But I just told it the name of the directory. And even though there's thousands and thousands of files in there, it reads them all like they're a table. So cool. And so then all I have to do is I can just treat it like a regular table. Look at this. I selected a bunch of data out and there's everything we need to be and all that. Now, here's the cool part. I went and found Benford's law and I turned it into some Transact SQL and it looks like it's just this. This is just, that's all there is to it. That and just doing a sub select to get the data and going over and all that kind of fun stuff. But I did this. Now here's the deal. Remember that the first digit should be a one 30% of the time, like 1,125, 1,238,000, whatever, right? It's supposed to be a one 30% of the time. And then it's supposed to be a two, like 17% of the time and so on. So I just do a little printout that shows is my data in that shape. Here's what I found. Look at this. My first digit here in one only shows up 11% of the time. It should be 30, right? And the, the two is 11, should be 17 and so on. Benford's law. But look at this. Not only did I catch myself cheating, but it's obvious a computer did this. Look at this distribution. So the computer obviously did this because a human, there's no way they can do billions of random numbers and get this kind of spread. So I caught cheating on myself and then was able to find out through Benford's law that it's there and we need to go do some investigation. But of course, I want to I wanna do one better. I want to make sure Ben Affleck has like all the tools he needs and like he doesn't have to go fight the bad guys. They can catch it right when it happens, right? Because money laundering is all about moving funds from illegitimate sources to legitimate sources. So if you can catch it way out at the edge, you stop it. And I thought, hey, SQL Edge, Edge, right? So here we are. We've got the edge going, so I make a machine learning model in SQL. I can deploy that right out to the edge, and I can do my predictions there. How cool is that? Isn't that neat? So we should totally do this as the demo. Okay, let's start the recording. Buck, that was perfect. We're using it as is. Glad to see you're keeping busy. I just love the way you see the magic of SQL Server in everything around you. Not many people apply it to the movies they're watching. <laughs> I'd like to finish this section by telling you about how an insurance company used big data clusters to transform data and improve business outcomes. HX is a unit of Howden Group Holdings that builds solutions to help insurers, reinsurers, and brokers get better insights. Like a lot of organizations today, the group was reaching the limitations of its legacy data platform, and they needed a new system that could easily handle their data and enable their teams to innovate more freely. Microsoft SQL Server 2019 Big Data Clusters allowed them to deploy scalable clusters of containerized SQL Server, Apache Spark, and Hadoop's distributed file system instances using their existing knowledge and skills. With Big Data Cluster, they've experienced faster access to data, enhanced security, greater reliability, and significant improvements in handling loads in response times for queries and analysis and Kubernetes has helped them more easily orchestrate, scale, and manage their containers. Today, HX analysts and data scientists also perform AI and machine learning operations in the Jupyter Notebooks and Azure Data Factory. This keeps them from having to change products over time, which accelerates development and improves collaboration. It's a win-win. So far, we've talked about three major locations where you can run SQL, in the cloud, at the edge, and on-premises. If your environment consists of two or more of those elements though, you're running hybrid. And when it comes to hybrid, our goal is to meet you where you are and help you apply the same innovations and benefits that we build into our managed databases to any infrastructure, whether that's on-premises and data centers, on the edge, or on any other public cloud. Azure Arc is a set of technologies that extends Azure management and native data services outside of Azure infrastructure to run across your environment. So even if you can't migrate to the cloud due to data sovereignty, latency, and regulatory requirements, you can still get the efficiency and agility the cloud offers. With Azure Arc, you can use any major distribution of Kubernetes on hardware of your choice to run Azure data services over workloads anywhere, giving you a number of unique benefits. First, you get a versionless evergreen SQL that ensures you're always current. This full automation updates also applies to Postgres databases running on Azure Arc. Second, 
you get cloud elasticity on premises, which allows you to optimize performance of your data workloads and dynamically scale up and down without application downtime. Third, Azure Arc offers unified management, which allows you to see your data services running on premises alongside those running in Azure through a single pane of glass and manage them using familiar tools like Azure Portal, Azure Data Studio, and Azure CLI. You can also get Azure's industry-leading security and governance capabilities by using Azure Security Center, Azure Policy, and Azure RBAC to protect your data on-premises. One key call-out here is that with Azure Arc-enabled databases, you get the automation and elasticity support even for data workloads running in places where you don't have continuous connection to public clouds or any connection at all. And Azure Arc also gives you the option to use modern cloud billing model for better cost efficiency across your hybrid infrastructure. We recently expanded this offering to include a public preview of Azure Arc-enabled SQL Managed Instance and Postgres Hyperscale with more Azure data services coming soon. Want to see what it looks like in action? You're in luck. Here for a one-time show, I mean demonstration, are Bob Ward and Connor Cunningham. They've gone to great lengths to be together for this. We do not recommend you try this at home, by which I mean getting together with friends, but by all means, please test drive Azure Arc. Bob and Connor are going to run us through three demos based on real customer experiences that show how you can use Azure Arc to embrace cloud-first innovation for your on-premise investments. I hear Bob's been missing the sounds of football stadiums so much that he made a few aftermarket modifications to his microphone. Let's see how this goes. Hello and welcome from Austin, Texas for another edition of the Bob and Connor Show. We're sorry we can't be there in person this year, but we decided instead to get together and build a fort out of boxes of masks and hand sanitizer instead. And we figured, well, if we're going to build a fort, we might as well decorate it. So we decided that we would put all of our favorite Dallas Cowboys gear here just to remind Rohan about all the fact that he needs to root for a different football team. So we haven't just been doing all fun and games, though. We actually have been working from home during this whole time. And I was actually talking to Bob yesterday about one of the scenarios that he's talking to a customer about. And I thought it would be really interesting for us to share. Bob. Yeah, Connor, you know, we're always talking about performance, usually with these customer problems. So I have another one that I've been dealing with. And that is the fact that sometimes customers run analytic workloads on a SQL server where they're just running like old PP type workloads. And it affects the overall performance many times because these queries are rightly so using like parallel type operations. So why don't I show you a little bit of what this problem is first a little bit and see if you've got an answer or solution. You usually have a solution every time we do this, so. That's the gig, Let me give it a shot. So. Okay, so you can see here, Connor, what I've got is, let me actually minimize these windows first here. Oh, sorry, I don't know how that screensaver got there. That, that's five Super Bowl trophies. Yeah, that's the Dallas Cowboys. That's at the facility, I've been there. I've been at their facility, so, oh, but sorry, that's for a different time. So uh, anyways, Connor, so what I've got here is I've got classic O-stress, and you know, I'm always using O-stress for this scenario. So in this bottom window, I'm just going to run this workload. This workload here is just kind of like a typical OLTP, OLTP tech workload. So it's very fast type of queries, lots of queries running as you run in very just a few seconds. In fact, when you run this thing, you're going to see here it's going to take, oh, I don't know, about like 10 seconds or so to run this query. And in this case, 11 seconds. Now, the top window, I've got my analytic queries I'm running. And so what happens is, and this is kind of a problem I see customers running into, is they'll kick off their normal workload, and then they'll run their analytic query workload, and the normal workload is affected by this analytic query workload because of all the resources they're trying to consume. This is kind of, kind of a problem for me. In fact, let me flip over and show you kind of what these queries are looking like as they run. So first here I've got, this is my, my normal workload. It just, it's a silly query, I realize. But it's just representing something that runs very fast, often. And my analytic query workload, you know, it's the typical thing, right? It's got all the different types of group buys and order buys, and it's running a, a typical a workload, analytic query workload that could take a lot of resources. So if I come back over here and I see the results of these, you can see now that the workload was running at 11 seconds. Now it's running like 20 seconds, but my analytic query workload, you know, is taking almost the same amount of time. You know, this is kind of a problem for me. I'm really not sure what to do about something like this, Connor. You know, how, usually I use like Query Store, maybe to go dig into it. So I'll, I'll try that. So I'll go into Query Store here. And you'll notice here that if I click on this, this is a query that was running all the time. But if I look at the average duration, I'll notice here that it's really this query, Query ID 11, 
And you know what? It looks like it's using parallelism. So Connor, here's the basic problem I see. I've got parallel queries running at the same time affecting my normal workload. I can't change the app though. I can't change the, the workload of the app. I can't change the queries for the report that re re you know, represents these analytic queries. And worst of all, I can't change configuration. I know we've got configuration options for Mac stop, for the server, for the database, but I don't have time to test that. Connor, I kind of need something that is kind of a, a quick fix to solve this. Well, Bob, um, I happen to terminal into your machine when you weren't looking. Why don't you go look at the query store hints .sql that I put there? This query here is called query store hints. Okay, query store hints. What exactly is this now? Oh, we've added the ability to do query level hints for any of the queries captured in the query store. So you can go and on a point basis decide I want to change the configuration of a query. So if you have an application where you can't change the workload, but the DBA still has to manage that system, you can now go in and just add whatever hint you want. So why don't you go add a max stop one hint on that query that you can't change. And now you, the DBA, can go save the day. Yeah, query store hints. I, I know about query hints. I didn't know I could do it with a query store. So I need this query ID, apparently. Let me go over here. It's query, it's query ID 11. So I'll look here, and I'm going to put in an 11 there. Let's get this right. And I will set this. So I guess this is going to tell the query store, when this runs again, make sure you run with max stop of 1, not max stop of 0. But hey, Connor, I need to kind of prove you're right about this. So let me run this thing again. Let me kick this off and double check this is going to do this. Now, I would expect in this case for my analytic query users that they're going to take a little longer than they normally did because they're in max stop of one, but they're, that's okay, right? They, 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 they take like a few seconds longer. Our main application workload can't afford any delay in what it's doing. Let me go back and pull the report again. Look at average. This is 11. Ah. Interesting. So now I see two plans here. One, which is running in parallel, but two, now it's taking longer, but now it's using max stop one. That is really interesting. So what if I just run these together again and see if you solve my problem? So I'm going to go back to my windows that I had before. So here's the workload window, and here's the analytic query workload window. So let's run this guy again. Remember, it took like 11 seconds before, Connor. Let's see if you solve my problem. If this works really well, you solved this problem without me changing my queries, my app, or any configuration. Look at that. It came back in 11 seconds. So I expect the reporting users to take a little longer now, but that's okay. They can afford to do that as long as my main workload is actually okay. Connor, this is pretty good stuff. Thanks, Bob. I hope you enjoy it. This is a great example of cloud-first technology, where we innovate first in the cloud. We deliver it first to customers in Azure, and then we eventually put this into things like versionless SQL servers like Azure Arc and eventually into the next major version of SQL Server. Right, so you need to keep in mind that the Max DOP1 thing is not the only thing you can use this for. This actually works great for any query level hint. So if you want to go hint memory grants or change whether or not you do parameter sniffing, optimize for unknown, all of those will work the same way as the demo we just showed here. You know, one of the things that I've been noticing lately is that SQL is pretty much everywhere. Uh, we've got SQL Server, SQL Azure, SQL on the Edge, and there's probably, you know, five or 10 other versions of SQL as well. It can be a little overwhelming. Is it possible that you can tell us how someone in Azure, like someone using regular SQL Server can get the benefit of just the stuff that we're doing in Azure to make their life a little better? I've actually heard that from customers before, that they want to know, I've got existing SQL Server installations. I'm not ready to move it exactly into the cloud. But I love the innovations I see in Azure, like security type things. I kind of take advantage of that. We just announced a public preview for something called Azure Arc, you may have heard of. And one of those options for Azure Arc is Azure, Nar Azure Arc enabled SQL Server. So you look in front of you, the Azure portal, and I've got a resource group aptly named Cowboys World. And if you see in here, I've got several assets in my portal. You can see that I've deployed in Azure, like a SQL Server Azure Virtual Machine or a managed instance or a database. But you'll also see something new you haven't seen before. SQL Server Azure Arc. This is where I've deployed a lightweight agent on my SQL Server deployment installation on premises. And it's going to be collecting data and information for me to allow Azure to go process that and give me security recommendations. So if I would click on this Dallas Cowboys VM, again, this is my on-premises SQL Server. You can see it's running SQL 19, running on Windows. I now have an option for security. When I click on security, this is us taking information from this virtual machine running on premises and processing it in the cloud and giving recommendations. You'll see here, like one of the number one things I can do is look at something called a vulnerability assessment. So if I click here, there are actual recommendations. And this is interesting because a lot of customers don't understand about maybe some of the vulnerabilities that can exist with their system databases. They normally just look at user databases. So I can see here several recommendations that we have found 
on the configuration of customer system databases in this virtual machine. For example, the SA login should be disabled. Maybe you didn't realize in your environment that an administrator had set up a SQL server and enabled SA, when really you probably don't even want that in your environment. We detected that so you can see it. Now we don't just take these vulnerability assessments and just come up with them in, you know, on a desk somewhere in our offices. We use actually known benchmarks like CIS and FebRAMP as ways to look at known security vulnerabilities in the industry and apply those to SQL Server. You can see there are other types of vulnerability recommendations we have, not just for things like SA, and this is going to apply across your system databases and your user databases. So this is really nice, and what we do is we can set up actual uh, periodic scans of your environment, and we can do this across multiple SQL servers you've got deployed in your enterprise. So it's not just vulnerability assessments that we look at. One of the other things that's the promise of security in Azure is something called advanced threat protection with Azure Defender. And you'll see here, there's an example of where I'm alerted to a possible SQL injection attack that has occurred on my on-premises SQL server. It's the same rules that we would apply using machine learning algorithms in the cloud for Azure resources. What we're doing now is just taking information that we detected in your environment and processing things in the cloud to detect you of a possible SQL injection. If you look in the details here, you can find all sorts of information about this, including like what time it happened, the account, the host it came from, the IP it came from, and then even better than that, you can come over and actually see, you go up here at the top, you can click on more, and you can see this selects one of those known string pattern queries where perhaps somebody went into an application that had like a form. It's, it's an, an environment where somebody in, built the app allows input to come in that factors some sort of where clause, and somebody's put in an injection string that could result in an injection tag on your SQL server. It's a great example of us taking things like vulnerability assessments and advanced threat protection to alert you for things uh, like the SQL injections and applying all that same technology we've been doing for the last few years in Azure, but doing that into your on-premises environment. So Connor, again, a great example of us applying technology across the entire suite of SQL server whether that be in the cloud or in your environment. It's pretty neat, Bob. I think it's nifty that we're seeing all this innovation. And hopefully this is practical stuff that you can use to make yourself a star in any organization. So thanks a lot, Rohan, for having us again on the Bob and Connor Show. Back to you. Amazing, guys. I love the fort idea. You need a new flag, though. I'll send you something. I really appreciate your hard work. Now get home safely. As Bob and Connor mentioned, they build those demos based on real customer challenges that Azure Arc solves, and there's really no shortage of them. I'm just gonna share one quick customer case story to give you an idea of how Azure Arc impacts the business. Ferguson Enterprises is the largest wholesale distributor of plumbing supplies in the United States. They run a complex IT environment made up of multiple clouds and more than 5,000 on-premises virtual machines across two data centers and 1,400 distribution centers. Across all these machines, the company needs to apply consistent policy and understand which ones are really part of which applications. Beyond that though, the IT team also wanted to find a way to deploy standard images of DB builds across the organization. They wanted to leverage the management capabilities of the cloud, and they wanted to provide a single view of their data and analytics to decision makers. The team chose Microsoft Azure Arc to extend Azure to their on-premises data centers. They did this by migrating their SQL Server database to an Azure Arc-enabled SQL managed instance and enabling it to use Azure Arc features such as automated updates, backup restore, and monitoring. Using Azure Arc, Ferguson was able to apply grouping and tagging from the Azure portal to inventory all their servers. Then through Azure policy, they were able to monitor and enforce configurations. This was their first entry into the cloud platform. It was a complex project due to the inputs, but the team leveraged their economies of scale to migrate data into Azure Arc enabled SQL managed instance in less than 10 minutes and get to work immediately using the familiar tools in Azure Data Studio. That's the power of the Azure Data Platform. So Azure Arc helps you extend Azure services to non-Azure products, which is great if you like what you have running already. But if you're running OSS or NoSQL on infrastructure, you have to manage yourself, or if you run it on a separate cloud that doesn't offer security and reliability of Azure, you might be ready for a change. The Azure Platform includes fully managed database services for your favorite open source databases or NoSQL database. It applies the power of manageability and security of Azure 
to your open source databases and provides you with consistent security and management tools, as well as common languages and frameworks that make these non-SQL Server assets feel familiar. For PostgreSQL, we offer Azure Database for PostgreSQL. With a hyperscale offering, built-in high availability and investment in the PostgreSQL community, there's no better place than Azure to run your PostgreSQL database. Likewise, we continue to invest in making Azure a preferred destination for MySQL and MariaDB workloads. By migrating to Azure Database for MySQL or MariaDB, you enjoy a fully managed database, low total cost of ownership, and the rich Azure developer ecosystem, all combined with the openness of the community database version. Last but not least is Azure Cache for Redis, which helps you accelerate the performance of other Azure databases by adding a lightning fast caching layer to scale IO throughput and lower read latency. In fact, in a recent study by GigaOM, we found that Azure Cache for Redis can increase throughput performance by over 800% and latency performance by over 1000%. Then there's our fully managed NoSQL database service. Azure Cosmos DB isn't derived from open source the same way MySQL and PostgreSQL are. But with Azure Cosmos DB, you get the scale and flexibility of Azure behind your NoSQL data. It's the only NoSQL service with financially backed SLAs for single digit millisecond response times and five nines availability. Running on Azure Cosmos DB, you can independently scale storage and throughput across any Azure region to put your data where your users are. Its APIs for MongoDB, Cassandra, Gremlin let you bring your existing data to the cloud and use familiar frameworks and SDKs. More recently, we've rolled out new auto-scale and serverless offerings to give you better control over costs without requiring you to manage capacity so tightly. And starting this week, we are rolling out serverless for all Azure Cosmos DB APIs. Serverless is a consumption-based model that's great for spiky, small to medium-sized workloads with moderate performance requirements. It is no minimums, which means you only pay for what you use, and you never have to worry about scaling down or turning off your dev and test workloads. And Azure Cosmos DB offers the industry's only serverless offering for MongoDB. At Ignite, we had the opportunity to announce Flexible Server, a new deployment option for our open source databases. With Flexible Server, you get the control you need with fine-grained database tuning and a simpler developer experience to accelerate end-to-end -end deployment. You also have new ways to optimize cost with stop and start capabilities and burstable compute options. You get all of this with community versions of MySQL and PostgreSQL. Last but not the least, we are very excited to share that popular Redis Enterprise features are now available on Azure Cache for Redis. The new enterprise tier provides much higher availability. I know we've breezed through these services in the interest of time, but I want to reinforce our commitment to supporting them and our dedication to helping you bring together your entire data environment to leverage all the goodness of Azure. Let's close this section with a video from JetBlue that explains why they chose to use Azure, specifically Azure Cosmos DB, to calculate optimal fuel needs for a flight plan. Airline industry has one of the lowest margin industries out there. And it's very easy to make a loss in a flight. An airline is made up of many pieces. Planes, it involves people, pilots, in-flight, airports. It involves customers, which is one of you. Buying, selling, cancellations, transactions. All of these systems can only work seamlessly when they're connected. You can only imagine if an API call takes seconds to come back, that's no more an API, right? That becomes a bad job in this modern world. So you need milliseconds, microsecond response time. And that's when we encountered the Cosmos DB. We use Azure to calculate optimal fuel needs for a flight plan. When we were looking to build our API database uh, and the API engine on which to run our user interface, our .com interface and operations interface. We needed a database that was fast, that doesn't need to be indexed. What's done with cloud is A, the data has become easier. It's faster to get to that, faster to do all these, all these calculations. And now, not just linear programming, you're able to create new models, machine learning models on top of that 
to help augment and be more predictive about these whether it's ticket pricing and so routing and so making sure that the right people are customers are being provided for you need something that aids you in doing this well right in order to give the best customer experience that video has got a nice beat we should add background music like that next time so jet blue chose cosmos db for their data but did you catch what they were using to create insights and run models azure synapse analytics specifically the new azure synapse link for azure cosmos db which we'll get to in a minute the azure data platform offers two options for performing analytics at cloud scale azure databricks and azure synapse analytics Azure Synapse brings together enterprise data warehousing, data integration, and big data analytics without limits into a unified product. It gives you the freedom to query data on your terms using either serverless or dedicated resources at scale. Azure Databricks offers a fully managed Spark environment. That means you get the same global scale, enterprise grade security and availability of Azure running the latest version of your favorite Spark engine. and both services provide industry leading performance for cost recent tpch benchmarks have shown that azure synapse runs up to 14 times faster and costs 94% less than other cloud providers likewise azure databricks on delta lake with photon performs up to 20 times faster in tpc ds benchmarking than other big data engines running spark Azure Synapse runs deeply integrated Apache Spark and SQL engines allowing data professionals who prefer SQL to seamlessly collaborate with those who prefer Spark and vice versa. For instance, now you can query Spark tables using the T-SQL language or use languages like Python, Scala, Spark SQL or C# to work directly in the service that houses your data pipelines, data lakes and data warehouses. All this functionality is supported by integrated data management and security. The result is an easy to use service for both structured and unstructured data. The distributed cloud native SQL engine of Azure Synapse is the first and only analytic system to run all TPCH queries at petabyte scale. We are talking truly limitless scale. With Azure Synapse, you can build end-to-end -end analytic solutions without having to stitch together numerous services. The unified experience in Synapse Studio helps you ingest, prep, manage and serve data for immediate BI and machine learning needs from one place and extends insights by applying models across all your data. And you can easily and securely share data with just a few clicks using the Azure Data Share integration. For immediate in the moment insights from operational data, we've added Azure Synapse link for Azure Cosmos DB. This is what they used in the JetBlue story to help them get their API calls down to milliseconds. In the future, we will also support Azure Synapse link for SQL DB and Postgres SQL. By adding the link between Azure Cosmos DB and Azure Synapse, you can get insights from your live transactional data stored in operational databases with a single click without moving the data or burdening the operational systems. It's another way to accelerate time to insight and use the power of Azure Synapse across your entire data stack. We've also streamlined your experience of applying machine learning models in Azure Synapse. Today, we're introducing a guided UI experience in the Synapse Studio that enables users to deploy machine learning models from Azure Machine Learning Model Registry directly into Azure Synapse for inferencing. Now the models your data scientists create for predictive analytics are easily accessible to all data professionals without needing to manually deploy the models to dedicated SQL pools. Even if it's not strictly an economy of skill, the way we've been talking about them, these kinds of enhancements are meant to increase your efficiency as well. I'd like to wrap up this section on cloud scale analytics by sharing a video that shows one of our customers, NeoGrid, using Azure Synapse Analytics to synchronize activities across supply chains. Picture the last exciting thing you bought. Shoes, a TV, a bike. Now, imagine not having it because it wasn't in stock. Disappointing, right? NeoGrid makes sure these supply shortages never happen. 
They do it by collecting millions of data points across the supply chain to forecast demand. Using analytics, they help retailers and manufacturers ensure their products are always available and never in excess. But NeoGrid's data warehouse infrastructure was nearing its capacity. Adding additional storage would have been costly and labor intensive and still wouldn't offer the scale they needed. So they turned to Azure Synapse Analytics. With Azure Synapse, NeoGrid now has an end-to-end -end analytic solution with limitless scale and better performance, all at a lower cost. Its powerful data warehousing capabilities let NeoGrid run an around-the-clock process to ingest and analyze retail, manufacturing, and logistics data as soon as it's available, giving retailers fast, actionable insights to help balance their inventory in near real time. Azure Synapse reduces the time it takes NeoGrid to provide point-of-sale data to manufacturers, helping them better synchronize their production flows with retailers' needs, keeping excess low, profits high, and your favorite things in supply. Okay. So after you analyze your data using Azure Synapse Analytics, you need a way to visualize and understand the insights from it, right? Queue up Power BI. As you probably know, Microsoft Power BI is a unified self-service, enterprise-grade business intelligence platform that combines an intuitive user experience with intelligent data visualizations to provide greater depth of data insights. Power BI works across the complete Microsoft Cloud, meaning reports can be shared within Microsoft tools like Teams, SharePoint, PowerPoint, or even within other productivity products. That way, you have it in the assets you need without versioning issues, and when you're working remotely, you can collaborate with others to respond to changes more easily. T-Mobile has an interesting history with Power BI and how they've used it to expand into the Microsoft Cloud on their own terms and at their own pace. We've been working with T-Mobile, the wireless service provider, for a while now. Last year, they chose Power BI to serve valuable information to everyday decision makers. The user-friendly service allows teams to easily interact with and derive meaning from their data of any complexity. In the process of fast-forwarding their business intelligence a decade and a half, they also cut their costs tremendously by getting rid of the legacy systems. What makes this story even more interesting, though, is the recent launch of a new application, Orbit. The company, or more accurately, a single person, developed the workhorse of an application by building it on the Power Platform, of which Power BI is a main component. While the application itself might not be the flashiest, I love this story because it's about one person in a huge company that took what he had and what he knew and changed the way his company thinks about their business. It's what I wish for all of us. To close out our time, I'd like to bring in Anita. She's going to pull together a lot of what we've been talking about today as she demonstrates using Azure Cosmos DB serverless with Azure Synapse Analytics and Power BI to create rich, meaningful insights using T-SQL over Azure Native and third-party dataset. Anita, thank you for joining me. Thanks, Rohan. Hi, everyone. I'm Anita Arasimili, Principal Program Manager from Azure Cosmos DB team. I'm very excited to be here with you all today. Through our demo, let us see how Azure Synapse Link can provide new business insights on real-time Cosmos DB data. This demo builds on a couple of recent enhancements that we made to our Cosmos DB service. First, Cosmos DB now supports serverless provisioning mode. With serverless, you only pay for the resources and the storage that you use. It makes it super easy to get started running small apps on Cosmos DB, and it is very cost effective as well. We are also excited uh, about the preview of analytical T-SQL queries and BI support for Azure Synapse Link, now for the first time including MongoDB data. This builds upon the previously announced support for Apache Spark Analytics. Now for today's demo, please imagine that I work at an electronics retail chain that has global presence. We are looking at building new supply chain platform on Azure. 
I would like to build a BI dashboard that our supply chain managers can use to determine detailed inventory requirements. All right, so let us see how we built this BI dashboard using Synapse Link. Let's get started by creating an account in Cosmos DB to hold our inventory data. With multi-master rights and millisecond latencies, Cosmos DB is the ideal choice for us. And so here's an account that I'm creating. As we'll be uh, rolling out the solution gradually across our stores, we expect the data to be sporadic and the throughput to be bursty. So I'm gonna go for serverless provisioning mode, all right? So here's a account that I previously populated with our inventory data. All of our inventory data is here in this retail sales demo DB and it has a few MongoDB collections. In products collection, we have information about each of the products and uh, such as the product code and the price. Uh, in retail sales, we have the sales information per store and per product. And then finally, we have uh, the sales demographics per store. Now you can also see that I enabled Azure Synapse link on this Cosmos DB account. And for each of the collections that we looked at earlier, I also turned on analytical store. With analytical store turned on, Cosmos DB is automatically replicating the transactional data into a columnar format that is ready for large scale analytics. All right, now that the data is ready for analysis, let's switch to Synapse Analytics. Here in the Synapse Studio, I can navigate to the linked services, connect to external data, pick the MongoDB endpoint, and give the account name and the database name. And that's it. With a single click, I can connect to the analytical data that I have now stored in Cosmos DB. All right, so now that the data is here, let us see how to query this using T-SQL. I've put together a few simple queries. This first query is looking at the products collection. This uses open row set, and uh, we support full fidelity schema for MongoDB, which means that if you have mixed data types for certain fields, uh, we retain all those data types. As you can see, like, you know, we specify the data type here and you can selectively, you know, filter on uh, particular data types by specifying the schema with the width class as shown here. All right, now if I wanna do more complex queries, I can put together some SQL views, the very familiar SQL views for all of you, um, just the same. So I'm querying uh, the, I'm pulling the products information into the SQL view called product. And then we have the retail sales view and the store demographics view. And then here are a couple of queries that I added. This first one looks at the views from product and retail sales, and it's looking at the sales in a particular store. And then the second one is pulling the views across all three and looking at the store demographics that you know uh, filter by a certain value. All right. Now you can also put together a single view that joins all the MongoDB collections as shown here. And I can source this view into a BI dashboard and build the dashboard in a very few minutes uh, to look at the inventory across each of our stores uh, by product type. And I can also you know, select a particular product and see the inventory by that product. And now, so all our supply chain managers can look at the inventory as they have it in different stores and they can be prepared to meet the demand. In summary, Azure Synapse Link has provided us business insights reflecting the current reality of our business in ways traditional, complex, expensive, and hard to maintain ETL processes would never have allowed. With serverless for Cosmos DB, it is also now very cost effective for me, especially for sporadic and bursty traffic. Together, these capabilities have unlocked new business scenarios for us. Thank you and back to you, Rohan. Thanks, Anita. 
Watching those sources and services work together so seamlessly makes my DBA heart speed up because we're doing it. From data to decisions, we are creating a comprehensive end-to-end -end data platform that helps you leverage economies of scale across technologies and accelerate your digital transformation. But all of this is just technology without you. Your collaboration and the support that you bring to this community give our work focus and meaning. You are the ones transforming our world. Thank you. I'd like to leave you with one final word from my MVPs. I hope you have a great summit. Yeah, I know you do too. Ray does too. Enjoy the rest of Pass Summit. Have a great Pass Summit, everybody. Hey, Diddy, are you doing the video? Yep. Hi, everyone. Hope you have a great conference. What she said. Cheers, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been fun. Oh, ah, that's a reminder to check in on the math worksheets. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your Pass Virtual Summit.